Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did an 18 by 24 inch canvas. Beautiful soft pink sky, two giant mountains, this nice curling ridge goes off. So much distance, forest down underneath, and then we're on the top of this kind of lookout point with these two trees. Just beautiful. You obviously think so, that's why you clicked on it. You want to learn how to paint it. So check the description below, find the colors you need, make sure you get your canvas nice and wet, get ready to throw some paint on it. We're going to do it just like this. Hey guys, you just caught me putting on the last little bit of our liquid white. And then we're really going to go over the canvas back and forth, these long strokes, just make sure we really have enough. If you don't know how to put on liquid white, check out my video in my how to playlist section. And uh, it's how to prime your canvas with Bob Ross liquid white. Imagine that, right? All right, so, so we have it nice and even across our whole canvas, right? You want to touch it, you can see the little ridges in the, of the canvas, or you should be able to see the little outline of your fingerprint on your finger. You don't want to have too much, okay? If you have too much, take a paper towel, scrub it off, make it nice and smooth again, and then start again, okay? Let's go right into our kind of sunset -y colors. Right here on the corner of the brush, gonna pull it out, maybe get a little bit of our crimson, maybe flip it over, get a little bit of the red. So we have them all three on the brush like that. Looks like a flag almost. It's really neat. Then we're gonna sit here and kind of crisscross them back and forth into their own little color. A little bit right on the brush, get this even distribution, but we have these little differences, right? Really neat, I don't wanna lose those. So why don't we come in and let's say, we'll just go in here. We already, because we mixed all three of those colors, we get this cool little bit of sky already, right? And we'll pull in from the sides, get a little bit of our water reflection down in there, just in case we decide to go with water. I get to flip our brush over so we get the red on the right side, right? There we go. Very soft, very soft, little quiet, little water. We'll come up here, we'll go get more of that color on our 18 by 24 inch canvas this time, right? I'm gonna come down and literally mix it wildly on the brush so we have these little differences. We can really come up here and just drop on that color like that. Let it kind of fade out on the sides until you like the way that it looks. If you want it real dark, you keep adding, you know, your darker colors. If you don't, then you can stop at any moment, right? Gonna come back in, get a little bit more of those three just to make it nice and easy. There we go, I want my water to be a little bit darker. There we go, we'll pull it in like that. Bam, 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 bam. Now we've got our water laid in. Let's go add some more to our sky, see what we're gonna do up here. Now I'm gonna switch colors and go into the crimson and get that real thick onto our, our brush. Cover all the other color that we had in that kind of crimsony color. Then we'll come up here, kind of come in from the top. Oh, very nice and bright. Lovely color, that crimson, just on, just on its own. I want to leave a little area of white, though, so we can blend these two colors in together. And we'll come up here. And because we have so much on the brush still, we can fill in that whole sky. You see, it's a little bit darker over there. So if you did want, you can take and add a little bit until it kind of meets how you want your sky to look. There we go. Coming in from the sides. Coming in from the sides. And then we can fill this in along the bottom with some dark crimson in there. This beautiful color, look at that. Now down here, you might use it for water, you might use it for snow, you could use it for anything. We're gonna take it and just slowly kind of blend those two together until they're, it's kind of hard to tell where one color kind of starts and stops. Blend it in, blend it in, blend it in. The more and more you go over it, the more it will change, the lighter it will become as it blends with that liquid white that's underneath. So you just keep playing with it until you like the way that it looks, right? Now we're gonna to switch to a clean dry brush to do this middle section because I don't want it to go that color right away. Have this be a little bit brighter, right? All we're doing is our crisscross strokes, just blending it back and forth together until we like the way that it looks. Now I'm gonna come back with our darker brush that already has all this color on it. And then we're gonna pull in and pull out. Same thing. In and out and in and out. Kind of grabbing some of that orange, pulling it out this way, grabbing some of the crimson and pulling it in. Until again, you can't really tell where one color kind of starts and one color stops. That's what I like. Gotta have it nice and blended. And then we can cover our whole side with this pinkish color. Sides and the top which I also prepped with the liquid white as we were painting. That way it makes it easier to just kind of fly over the sides like that. 
Then we got this beautiful, soft, kind of pinkish colored sky with our little sunrise right in the center, nice and bright. It was beautiful. And we can take and whatever, if you have any, you know, kind of striations or lines that you don't really like, just take them and blend them away until you have this nice, soft sky. Beautiful, soft little deal there. Look at that. You can almost see the, the little ridges from the, that beam that's in the back. So what I like to do is take my hand, kind of put it behind there and give this very light pressure. And then you can blend that whole line away. As long as you have a little bit of pressure back there. Yeah. It's fantastic. A lot of times, some of the times the canvases aren't as stretched as you want them to be. So you get this, man, that's pretty. I might just leave it like that. I was gonna make it darker, but we may just leave it just like this. It's the cool thing about this channel is we, I'm literally making it up. It's Saturday night. You're watching this on a Wednesday, but it's Saturday night for me and I'm literally making it up as we go and uh, trying to make you think that I've painted this scene before. Showing you that you can really just let it fly. See what it looks like, adjust, come back, and uh, make your painting that much more beautiful, really. And you can do it all on the fly. It's really fun. Take a little bit more of that blue, just the smallest bit though. And come in from the top corners and just kind of blend that together as well. All right, pulling it down, letting it work its way in and just kind of change the color just slightly. Really neat. You don't need a whole lot of paint for this. Very little amount. And then you can blend it how you like it. I kind of like those lines though. That looks pretty neat. Looks like the sky is like reaching outward. Looks kind of cool. Maybe we can drop a little bit of that down in here, like James Jennings is painting, right? Or not a painting, that photo that he was talking about. It's really neat. Yeah. Again, you can make, you know, you can use that dark color to make all sorts of clouds and do all sorts of things in your sky. It doesn't all have to be, you know, that same brush or the same color or this or that. You can take a little bit of color here, a little bit of color there, put it in, put the little yellow in. It's just a little bit of far off something, something or other. A little bit more crimson, maybe we'll come in on this side. Just leaving some of those differences back there though. You don't need a whole lot, but you wanna have that little bit of lighter colored line, just gives it some distance. And we'll just play with the sky until we like the way that it looks, right? It's really neat, really like it a lot. Come back, maybe a little bit more crimson on this side. Bring in a, a shadow of a cloud. Just something to play with, right? Maybe they're far off things that are so far away that they're just blurry and you can't even see what they are. Nice, as the dogs make all the noise in the world, right? That looks really neat. I like that, maybe a little bit more crimson-y. You see how I work in circles? It gives you those cool kind of cloud wispy-like effects because you're whipping in these circles and your brush is dropping things, you know, ever so lightly. That's really neat. A little bit more crimson though. I really want to have the shadow of this cloud a little darker than that. Trying to maintain some of those light areas, but having a little bit darker of that crimsony shadow is really going to be nice. Just a little difference in color, right? That's what we always talk about, having differences in color. So it's not all the same crimson. There's orange, there's a little bit of shadow, there's light, there's yellow, there's all sorts. There's white around the edge where we didn't even put any paint, right? All kind of stuff. All right, let's see. I kind of like the way that looks. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of that dark color, our black or the Bob's Mountain mixture in this instance, very dark color. Mix it with the crimson and the blue, but much more crimson than blue and black. Right, we really want to have it like this dark crimsony color. A little bit more black in there. There we go. Nice and dark. It's really dark purpley color, right? You see us scrape it up, pull it out flat on both sides, and let's decide we'll scrape up a little bit. Maybe we have like a, you know what? Actually, I want to mix it. Let's mix it with a little bit of white. All right, mix it in like this. It's going to become very light colored, a very light shade of that purple. You see the difference? Now this guy will throw way off back here, like this straight line back here. Just kind of cutting it in. Could be the bottom of a cloud, could be something off in our minds. 
could be anything, right? Rub a little of that extra color back in here so we have something to kind of mix with. We get a whole bunch of something happening over here. Grab our one inch brush and we're gonna use enough pressure that it doesn't totally blend away, right? I don't want it to go away. But we're kind of dragging up from the bottom, taking the top down, dragging up from the bottom, all while doing our little circles, right? And you get the kind of base shadow of this cloud. Or look like a spaceship, some kind of something off back there. And we do the same thing with our, with our white and the knife. Maybe grab, let's say a little bit of red, just a little bit though, you don't need a whole lot. Right, because it's going to go pink very fast. Mix all that up. That way it's not super bright white. We don't have to use our whites, you know, the white all the time. And if you don't over mix it, you'll have this cool, you know, difference, little, little difference in color back in there. Right, scrape it up. It randomly drops the paint differently, which is what we want. We don't want it to be the same throughout the whole cloud. That way, when we come back with our brush, the same brush we used, didn't wash it or anything, just make our little circles, leaving some space, leaving some darker areas, some lighter areas, this, that, and the other, blending it out where you don't want it so bright, you can keep going and going until you like the way that it looks. A soft little floater way off back there. Oh, it's nice. Oh, yeah. That's a good looking little cloud. Okay, why don't we do something a little bit closer, right? Maybe this cloud... We'll take some of that darker color, mix it in with some of the lighter color that we made down here. All right, so again, so it's not exactly that it's as dark as it can be. Maybe throw a little bit of white in there. Just mix it up. And maybe the shape of this cloud comes down this way and just pushes that guy off in the distance. All right, maybe we lose a lot of that guy. That'll be cool. All right, it dumps it on in random areas, so when we come back, at the bottom of our cloud will be this random shape. And you just mix it until you like the way that it looks. That's all you gotta do. Take a step back, look at it, see what it looks like. And mix up a little bit more of that white in with this color that we already have already. Just again, so it's not pure white. It may look pure white on this white palette, but it's not pure white. Okay, come up above our shadow. Give it some room to grow down. Right, these ones are gonna be a little bit more white than the ones behind it. It's gonna help push those things further off in the distance. Right, so we need more paint, thicker areas that we can blend and they'll become lighter. We'll come up here with our cloud, our cloud making brush. Just make little circles back and forth all over the place. We don't want them to be the same, right? We want this one to be brighter. So if you've already mixed it too much, you go back in, add a little bit thicker, area, a little bit more white, a little brighter, right? It just helps push that one further back. That's why we use brighter colors in this one. There we go. We can literally mix it up. We can change the whole shape of the cloud by adding a little bit of straighter line underneath. Okay, we need enough to be able to blend. Take our same brush, haven't used it at all. Look at that. Now all of a sudden we've changed the shape of this cloud. Don't just have to keep it the way it was, right? And come back in, scrape up the last little bit of that cloud color that we had made. And maybe this guy's got a little hump in here. And we take our brush and just very lightly mix it because it wants to disappear, it wants to blend away completely. We don't want that to happen. So very lightly mix it in. And just because it might look neat, let's put a little, like a little bit, just connected to nothing back here. Let's see if we can't get that to grow together. See that? It even looks like it's part of the cloud behind it. You can do all sorts. You can bring it in front. You can kind of mix the two whites where they're not such a dark area in between. Almost dropped my brush right there. You can come up this way. You can do all sorts of stuff until you like the way that it looks. It doesn't have to matter what anyone else likes. You step back and you go, wow, look at that. That's your cloud, right? That's what you wanted. That's what happened. That's what came out. That's good. That is good. Okay, we're going to take a clean, dry brush right up from the top or from the bottom, sorry, straight up from the bottom, and we're gonna come across to the side. Very lightly though, listen. Very light, very lightly. I'm not trying to push it cloud, I'm not trying to do anything, but make it a little bit softer, a little bit further away, a little bit fuzzier looking, right? And that's all that does. Okay, let's take a little bit of our, we're gonna make this color a little darker now, okay? We, we mixed the blue and black, 
We had it mostly crimson, which made it purple. And then we mixed in our white to create this kind of lighter color. All right, we're gonna scrape all of that up, get it all in, gonna make it darker. So a little bit more black, a little bit more crimson, a little bit more blue. Mix it up until it's this dark, nasty, gross looking color. And as you scrape it away, you can almost see the difference from the purple that we had mixed before to the darker color that it is now, just from what's left on our palette. Okay, now in order to do the same thing where we're gonna have you know, one cloud look further away than this one, we can have one mountain look further away. So in order to do that, we need to take that same color and kind of brighten it up again. Because as we come closer to us, it's gonna become darker and brighter at the same time with the highlights, right? And in this instance, it's going to become lighter in the distance, makes it look further away. So you don't wanna to use too much white either because it's gonna blend with the white that's already on here. So don't go too bright, you end up not seeing it. It'll be too far away. And then you're like, uh, there was, there was a mountain back there, but now it looks like a cloud because I painted it so far away. <laughs> All right, let's see. And remember, we have to cover over some part of something. So even if this is the best cloud you ever painted and you're in love with it, you're gonna have to lose a little piece of it somewhere. So kind of pick and choose where you want to lose it. Okay, so I'm gonna scrape up a little bit of that color there. You can see it's a good thick amount because I don't wanna run out, right? We have to go back and forth and back and forth. So why don't we do this far off bit? That's a little dark even. Kind of cut off some of those bits of our, our clouds back there. That way we can't see them. All right, a little rounded top, because not everything needs to be a pyramidal shape or a triangle up there. A little bit of our dark color down in there, scrape it up. Like literally scraping it so we can use it somewhere else. You scrape it up off of where it is. The more thick paint that you have up here, the longer your mountain's gonna grow. So if we scrape it all, and place it in little strategic areas, then our mountain can grow all at once because there's not a lot of paint up there. All right, we're gonna take it, come down, let's bounce it over. Only really worried about what the top edge really looks like, right? That might be like a rock sticking up over there, or we could change the whole thing into a little peak, and now it looks a little bit cooler because you had to make that change, All right? But you don't want it to be the straight lines and everything, it's, it's crazy. It doesn't need to be straight. Right? The more, the harder we push, the harder, you know, the, the longer this is gonna grow on our brush. So very lightly, right? I can still see some of the light areas that are in there that we had planned, you know, that we had painted before. And remember, it doesn't always have to go to the edge. You can let it very lightly go off down like that. Just so light, right? And yours will be different. Your pressure will be different. Your, the amount of paint that you have on your brush will be different. So don't worry if it doesn't look the same, totally fine. Just be very light, right? You can always add more. Can't take it away once it's there. So be light with your strokes, with your pressure, with everything. Maybe it comes down this way. Just kind of fades off into nothing back there. Pushes that cloud way away, way off in the distance. All right, now let's decide. We need to make up some shadowy color. If it's gonna be like a wintry scene, which is kind of what my mood is feeling. It's cold. I mean, it's nice and warm here in Vegas, so I want to get back to the, the brief cold winter that we had when it was like 30 degrees. I know, I know. I, I shouldn't complain about the cold, which I'm not. I'm just saying I wish I, it was longer, longer period of cold for us because I'm already starting to get like suntan lines. Okay, so we're going to make up our little bit of snow color. We have our dark color, which is this color here, so we can use that as part of our shadows as well. And now we need to make up like a, a, a highlight color. What's our snow gonna look like? Well, I don't want it to be perfectly white because as we get closer, our highlights get brighter and our shadows get deeper and I'll explain it as we get there. So don't worry, right? Let's say we used a little bit of that pinkish color in the clouds and those came out pretty nice. So then we have all this pink in the sky. So what if we use a little bit of red again, littlest bit, and it will turn our, our snowy highlights into this reddish kind of pinkish color, beautiful. Again, you will not grab up the exact amount of red that I just did and the exact amount of white, so it's not gonna be exactly the same. But don't worry, it doesn't have to be, right? It's not a competition of whose can be exactly the same as I paint it, not a big deal. So now we have two different color shadows and then we have our highlights and we still have the white. We can go with our white in certain areas. We just don't want it to be all white. So now let's do our shadows first. I'm imagining all the sun back here, so let's do this side in shadow. Right? And just pull it out. Just let it go crazy. Come up here with our roll. Lightly 
pull down to the side. Whatever sticks is gonna stick. Wipe it off so you have a fresh blade. Come back, scrape up another little bit. Come back, same thing. Pull, as soon as you hear that, your knife scraping on the canvas, you know you're out. And the, the look isn't gonna be the same. So go back, scrape it up again. Pull it out. Just like that, as you come down. It will break, you want it to be broken and nasty. You don't want it to be smooth. Smooth is not what, the, what we're going for here. It's a broken, snowy, rocky mountain. Every piece that's not snow is maybe a piece of rock that's sticking up or that can't, you know, it didn't get covered. The snow wasn't that deep to cover all of it, right? Man, that's gonna be nice. All right, let's take a little bit of our dark color here that we've made the mountain out of. And we're gonna come back and go over those areas a little bit, just drop some of that dark in there just kind of randomly. Okay, it's gonna make sense, I promise. In my mind, the, the shadowy side over here isn't gonna be as bright. So we're gonna throw in a bit of that dark and the more and more we go over it and the more and more it mixes together and as we soften it with our brush, it's gonna be so nice. A little bit of dark down there. Okay, now we're gonna come in with our, our kind of pinkish highlights, right? Let it break like that, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. You want it to break in, in, in different angles. So scrape it up, pull it down to the side. Maybe come over here, that side goes over there. This side's much straighter. You can do anything you want and you go back in and you get some more paint. And you come over here and you do this and you do that. And there's a little peak or it's not. And maybe it connects over here. Maybe this side kind of pulls into the, to the shadow just a little bit where you can get a little bit of that happening, right? And you're, you're starting to ski down like you're in the Olympics and you can see it, you can see it in your mind. And grab a little bit of white, a little bit more of that red. Mix it up in here, kind of changes the color. We even grabbed a little bit of blue, but it's fine. All right, we come down here. Maybe there's a maybe there's a, a dead drop just straight like that off of that cliff. All right, and come over here, get the rest. Leaving little darknesses in between. You get little shadows. The light can't touch everywhere. All right, as you pull it down and it breaks off of your knife like that, it's gonna look like that. And that is the look that you go for. The more and more you scrape, right? maybe you can scrape it off, get that roll of paint up again, go at it again. Changes the color a little bit, softens it a little bit. And we can come back with our white and really brighten up some certain areas. Maybe where the, the light is just really just kissing the top. And just from the angles of your brush will change your mountain, right? It doesn't all have to go the same way. Even though our mountain is sloping this way, we have some that are going down, some that are arced, some that are doing this, coming back the other way. All sorts of things are happening. Okay, we're gonna take some of our white and just blend it in here, just so it's not too dark. And we're gonna come back in with our, our fog. And take our one inch, or two inch brush, sorry, and kind of swipe up in the direction that we swipe down. So on that guy, we kind of went straight up. These guys were over here. And you just go up as high as you feel comfortable going, right? The further you go, and the more times you swipe at it, the softer it will become. And then, you know, you really want a lot of texture up on top. But when we get down to the bottom, if there's too much texture, you can't cover anything. You can't put a tree there, you can't do anything with it. So you wanna have it nice and soft down here. That's why we start to go up like that. It softens it, softens it, softens it. All right, now we can come back in and start to tap with the corner of our brush, bringing down that foggy, a little bit of fogginess down there. All right, letting it flow outwards. Now our mountain is kind of floating on this bit of foggy area with its one shadowy side. It's beautiful. Another reason we do this is so that we can come in with trees or a forest back there or something, right? If it's as thick as it is up here, our thickest layer, if you go to put more thick paint on top of that, on top of that, you just, it, eventually it's just not gonna stick. And then you're gonna go, Josh, it, it doesn't work when I try this. And I go, well, all right, it looks too thick or this or that. And your fog does not have to be on a straight line, right? So you can go up, you can go down, you can go different ways and you can pull it off. You can literally move mountains, right? There we go. Nice and soft little foggy piece. And then you step back and you go, well, what would look cool? On the next one, like what else do I do? And then you kind of decide and you go from there.
Let's see, like maybe this guy, if we kind of dump a bit of snow back there. I got the snowy field as he came down. Which again has to have its own shadows and stuff. There we go. Right, that might look neat. And then we can come and cut it off with something. I'm going over it because I'm gonna flatten it down. I'm not scraping it, just kind of going over it flat, dragging it. And then we're gonna come back here with our brush and go in the opposite direction of how we came down. And now we have this long section out here of snow that we can cut in front of with a closer mountain and put a lot of distance in this painting real fast. There we go, it's far off little snowy peak. It's starting to look really neat. Starting to look cool, guys. It really is looking cool. Let's get a little bit of that darker color, right? We'll make up another mountain in front of this guy. Maybe over here, All right? Kind of staying along the edge, just the little edge of that fog where we made a little softer. And this guy maybe comes in front. Maybe it falls down. Maybe there's a little, like a waterfall area back there, which doesn't look half bad. Right? I kind of messed up with our brush, so we're going to just blend it out a little bit which even looks neater the way that it is there, All right? And then we can add something else over the top of that cliff. Throw a little bit of our color back in here, scrape it down. I really don't want this one to grow very far. Just wanted him to be in there. He wanted to come play. You can scrape up a little bit more of that and put like another little peak back here. Connect those, connect those guys together. Break it down, and again, I'm not even gonna go all the way to the side. Really not. Very lightly pull, because I don't want it to grow too far. And now all of a sudden we have just, just another whole bit of mountain right inside of our little area, which we can now highlight a different way. Maybe there's a waterfall that goes down there or something. Some kind of something. Some kind of something. Okay, now we're going to mix it up, dragging some of the color up, some of the other color down, just mixing it together. That way it'll look like fog at the base. Bam, 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 bam. Looks good. I'm going to adjust this real quick. What is going on here? There we go. Now I can see. I can see what you guys can see. i got to deal with all this glare all the time. Now I can see what you guys can see. <clears throat> really mix it in like that. I mean, we do, we can add a, we've just added a whole nother layer of distance. We could do all sorts of things. We could continue this mountain along. It could be all sorts. What are we going to do, Joshy? We could do all different kind of things. Let's do that. You just have, you know, you go with it. You see an idea and you go with it, right? Pop that up into there. Maybe we'll push it off. Maybe there's another little hump. And it can go off this way and live on forever, right? No more waterfall. It's all gone. All gone. All because we had an idea, we saw something. Maybe this guy comes in front of this guy. Just from pulling it that way, it does now. See what I mean? It curves around. So now that'll give me an idea on where I can take that little curve and what we can do over here and different things. Maybe there's a lake over here, a little hidden thing now. And all because of how I looked back and saw how it was different, you can change your whole idea. Now, having that color back there, our, our initial color, it's going to look like a lot of fog that's back there. This real bright versus the real dark, you're going to have that distance back there. And because we softened up all that paint, it's going to look good. Man, is it going to look good, guys. Again, all this is doing is softening the paint so we have, you know, another layer that we can put on. We can do something else. Maybe it even comes down from this side. You know, it's all on how you how your brush strokes plan out. Maybe it goes over that way. That looks a little bit better. Right, this side comes down, kind of flattens out. You can do anything. All depends on what it looks like. And now our whole, our whole thing has changed because of you know taking a step back and looking at it, and seeing what's going to look best. What's going to look best if we do it like this, or if it goes over here, and then kind of don't forget that 
when you go to do your highlights. Now remember we had that idea, now we have to make it look like that. Which is the fun part, if you ask me. Okay, so if all, a lot of that's gonna be in the shadow, because we're, especially if we're gonna make it this curved thing. So maybe in the top, we're gonna come down with our knife in these curved angles. Okay, scraping up a fair amount so it can drag and drop off the knife. And when we hear that it doesn't have any more paint on it, we go back and we get more. Right, this side maybe comes down. Doesn't all have to be the same blue though. We wanna let it blend into that darker color that's back there. Plus we don't wanna to have to make up too much blue snow, right? That's gonna take all day making all this blue snow, Josh. Here we go, maybe this guy, there'll be a little bit of highlight on him. So we'll do a little bit on that side. Maybe there's another ridge that came down there. All just from our random strokes, right? And then we can leave or add, you know, some of the darker color deep back there in the, in the shadows, you know what I mean? And really change it up into this real dark, spooky place back there. And based off of our you know, drags is what the shape of your land is gonna be. So you gotta be, you gotta be careful with your angles, right? Maybe on this side, there was a little bit over there. And it came down or it comes down this way. All of it, it's gonna look like a bunch of cool little rocks that are way off in the shadows. Way off there. I'm trying not to get too much blue down in here with this, you know, kind of pinkish greenish. It looks really good down there. Don't wanna to get too much of that blue in there. All right, our little shadowy bit's gonna curve. Again, you can always go back over and change it and, and adjust it and see what looks best. You don't have to just commit to one thing and that's it. Now we're gonna need a lot of white paint, Josh. Okay, let's mix up a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the red for this one. We'll kind of make it a little, a little different color, a little bit of like this orange hue, this early morning orange sunrise. Look at that beautiful yellow color right there. All right, I mean, we got a little bit on the top of this guy. Just on the edges where the, where the sunlight's just still kissing it. All right, then we'll start to go off on its own over here. The key is though, leaving some dark areas of your mountain to separate it from the one behind it. That way it doesn't look like the same mountain. All right, this guy, we're gonna load up the knife with a larger amount of paint, really scraping it up. That way we can make long strokes like that and pull it down in a different way. All right, maybe it goes off this way now. You don't want to force it, just let it happen. If it wants to be there, then the canvas will take it. If it doesn't want to be there, then it's not going to have it. That's all you got to do. Really all you got to do, guys, that is it. Is make this beautiful, beautiful thing. And again, don't cover everything, right? You don't need to cover all of these dark areas, right? It looks really cool that we left it like that. And sometimes I step back and I go, oh, it needs just a little bit or or something on the top maybe, like the, the top of it had a little bit of yellow, and then it went off into shadow back there. And just don't overdo it, right? Oh, it looks great. Man, that looks cool. You just don't wanna overdo anything. Yeah, and even that just looks like a little drop down. But the more things you do, the more cool things will happen. But it is very easy to overdo it. You can definitely get it overdone. And you do not want these well done, let me tell you. I don't care how you like your burger, you do not want these suckers well done. Just going right along the top of the edge. Just giving us a little ridge to the top of our mountain. That looks really neat, but that's a little too bright. Kind of go over it again. There we go. Nice, deep, little, dark, little shadows, right? Very, very cool. Maybe some of our, our mountain over here has got a little bit of light too. Because why not? Lights everywhere. Just a little bit of difference in color, right? Just maybe all we did was change it a little. Maybe we'll put a flat top to this guy right here. Just a little difference and the sun came down and lit up that snow. Maybe that's a great place to go snowboarding for the US and then just flying down. It's really cool. But try to, try to retain some of that orange color in there, right? We don't wanna do the whole, we don't wanna lose it all because that can turn into some fog. It'd be really neat. Or maybe right down here, there's a little bit of water back there. 
a little bit of snow has come off of the little piece of mountain and it's just kind of drifting across the thing. Oh God, look at that. That is really nice. It's so nice, you guys. Littlest, smallest little bits of white back in here, just so we don't cover up all of that yellow and that kind of orangey color back there. And there's a little bit of light. Kind of drag this down, let it mix in. Oh man, that is really neat. I really like this mountain. Okay, we're gonna pull up from the thing at the same kind of angles. Same angles, right? We can take all this and get rid of it down here. Just like that, just by going over it a little. Okay, same angles on this guy up here. If you came down this way, you go up that way. You came down this way, you go up that way. And then we're just very lightly gonna pull them out. Maybe we don't even know what's happening down here. Is it a field? Is it a little bit of a snowy hill? You know, what was that little piece of dark thing right there? Is it the side of the mountain still coming down? Is it fog? Is it sunlight? You can even take it and mix it up a bit. Make our little foggy area back there. Oh man, you guys, what have you guys made me do? today, right? Look at that. Okay, we're gonna take some of this very lightly. It's gonna start to pull it down and go up in the direction, right? So we're constantly changing our angles. And just like that, we've got a beautiful little bit of mountain. I don't even know that I wanna put anything else in there, guys, honestly. That looks amazing, just like that, just like it's floating way back there. All right, we're gonna have to switch to like a, a small little bit of forest off back there. Man, that looks so nice. This bit looks so nice back here. It's like, when do you stop with those little things like that? That is the key. Gotta step back and look and go, okay, all right, that's it. That's foggy. That's all we need. A little bit of fogginess back there. Really great. All right, stop messing with it, Josh, and let's get to painting. Almost need a little bit more down in here. There we go. A little bit of brightness. There we are. Boom, boom, boom. The more we mess with it, the more you either like it or hate it. So it's all in how you look at it. Let's take this guy and sort of blend him down just a, as small as we can get. There we go. Just puts a little bit of distance back in there. And then we're going to add something on this side anyway. Gonna be really great. Yeah, we could do that. We could definitely do that, guys. We could do that. All I'm doing is brightening up our little ridge over here. We're gonna take some of that blue, gonna go off the side, down the back, kind of letting it mix in with that white that's there. So we get this little bit of difference, and then we can come in and really mix it in with our, our ridge. There we go, they've got these little difference in color back there. Maybe that got a little bit of sunshine on it. Really gonna bring it down. I like that right there too. Till I, till I drug it out like that, crazy. But just having that little bit of darker, little bit of shadow in there looked really neat. And again, some of the times I can really mush it onto the canvas like that. And then some of the times you really want it to drag off. It depends on the look that you're going for. Like these, the more that we mush, the more they're gonna look like fog. All right, so we'll mush them down in there. Kind of gets rid of all of those little hard lines and let, leaves us with this little area back here. Kind of mix that out, throw it over there. All right, that's what we wanted to do. Now let's do it. We're going to mix up our tree color, which is the same three colors that Bob loves to use, that I love to use, crimson, black, and blue. We need a fair amount of it because the rest of this painting, I believe, is just going to be some evergreen trees. That's what I'm feeling. I don't want to try to force anything in there. These mountains have turned out so fantastic that they just need a couple tips of some trees over here just to push everything back. It's going to be great. Going to be great. So we need a lot of paint. 
when we're on a white canvas, we definitely need a whole lot of paint back there, right? Something about that, something about this just doesn't, I'm not feeling it so dark back there. There we go, that's better. I didn't need it to be so dark in this, in this one little area, kind of like this guy. Little shadows back in there. That looks really cool. I really love this area back here specifically. Just that one brush. If we can just kind of pull those down just at the right angle and soften them while retaining that bit of fun, kind of foggy morning mist color back there. That what, that's what painting's all about. That one right there. That is what it's about. All right, let's do our big old fan brush. We're gonna go right into that big thick pile of paint and kind of try to make it look like an ax blade on the, on the edge, right? We got a good amount on each side, not too far up the bristles. I don't want it all the way up to the, the where it connects at the handle there. But when you look at it, it's a big kind of goopy on each side looking ax blade. So let's see, let's paint some, let's paint some cool, oh, you know what we could do? That might look really neat too. That might end up looking really cool. All right, let's take some of this and make a little bit of fog out of it. That's what we didn't do. There's no fog down there. This whole side, we can just fog it up. You never know where it's gonna, where it stops, where it ends. Where's the, what's the end game, sucker? Here we go. Swipe that up, bam, bam, bam. And we don't know if it continues off down here or if it doesn't, does it? In your mind, does it continue off down there? It might, it might not. We'll see what happens. Right, but in my mind, maybe there's an outcropping right here. We have some far off little bits back there. All right, let's do those first. Now we're gonna mix up a little bit of white into that same kind of color that we mixed right here, just to make it lighter, right? If we wanna put something in the distance, it's gotta be a lighter color than the thing that's gonna be in front of it. Grab our brush right here into that lighter color, the same kind of grayish color that our mountain is made out of basically. And let's say off here, why don't we put a couple, a couple of these far off little bits of trees back here. Just by popping up and down and up and down and trying not to make them all the same height or the same shape, right? Don't have to fill it in all the thing just yet. Right? Maybe they go up the hill and you can continue on and go up the, this crazy slope up here. You can do anything you want, right? And they come down, maybe, but we, we're, we're focusing on not leaving so much distance back there. You don't want to have too much fog, right? If you're, if the tops of your trees are down here and you've got this much fog in between, it just doesn't look right. There's never that much distance back there, right? Every so often, if you're brave enough in a soft area of paint, you can come up into your, your thing. Why don't we even make a little, this guy's like, he's a little bit closer, a little bit bigger than all the rest of the guys. And now he's the, he's the one big pine tree out there, right? And continue on. Bash them in, but when you when they become not so you know pointy or sharp, when they're not so sharp, you got to go back, load up your brush again, run out of paint, and then continue on down. Maybe over here, we got these little far off bits of force as it runs down through this way. Okay, now going to be about two to three lengths on some of these guys. Okay. One, two, three. Now you want it like that so we can take the bottom, start over here, just tap it, all right, almost all the way to the top. On some of these thicker ones, we're gonna take them and swipe straight up, as straight as you can get. All right, it gives a nice pointy tops to them. And then we can come down here and start to grab some of that color and work it down. All right, we're coming up here, working it down. Coming up here, working it down. That's all we're doing in fast motion, okay? Tap, 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 tap. That's all we're doing. And the reason we're doing this is why? So we can have a soft area to continue to add layers. You got, whoop. <clears throat> Almost lost the sucker there. So yeah, you have to have a soft area to continue to add layers of paint. That's why we like to make it nice and soft down here. It's not all thick and chunky and nasty. Not like it is up here, right? Very soft. 
very foggy, very much just the, the very base color that we put down on our canvas to begin with. That's all we really did. Okay, now what if we were thinking about our idea and we decided to add a whole other thing out here? So we're gonna go back to that brush that we loaded with our darker pile of paint before we decided to try to make this pile. All right, got it nice and thick and loaded. And then maybe let's put a couple of our, our, our trees over here. Gonna be like this. Maybe one like that. Those are just the, the trunks of our trees, right? I want one to be a little bit taller. There we go. Just like that, coming out of our forest. Okay, now we're gonna go back. We're gonna, now we don't have a, a knife-like edge anymore, right? It's all messed up because we came down straight. So we're gonna go load more of that paint onto the brush again on each side. Again, not all the way down, just like maybe a quarter inch right there. Nice and thick, nice and layered, right? You want it to be all sticky and gross and textured, just like that because that's what we want to leave on the canvas over here. And we're going to come to the side. And my brush is like this. It's not straight, right? We're not going, we're not doing the downward ones. We're not going straight at the canvas. It's on an upward angle. We're pushing at a 45 degree like this. Uh, 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 with our brush, just like that. Okay, and we're going to go slow. You don't have to go fast. We're going to touch just the corner and push up, right? Oh, it just left the smallest little thing, which is okay. We're going to come down, do a couple more pushes, maybe some with a little bit more Pressure made it grow a little bit bigger. The lighter ones are lighter, obviously. All right? And again, just the corner. Doesn't have to be the whole amount of, of bristles yet, right? We're just pushing against the corner. We're pushing it and pushing it. You can even see we've only gone about halfway up. So then maybe we hop down, maybe let's flip it over, right? So now our sharp side is over here. And then we can continue to make some new branches. But again, not all the same. They don't all have to be the same on each side. Don't have to come out the same, doesn't have to be the same amount of number. And I can tell I'm starting to lose that, that kind of hatchet blade or ax blade look to my brush. So I know I'm running out of paint. So we're gonna go back in. We're gonna come back again with the corner to start. Even if you're down here where you're gonna use all the bristles, start with the corner, trust me. Come in just the corner and you can start to see how it builds itself. And then poof, we've got this bit down here. All right? You can go back and add in little bristles or little branches as you want. Doesn't all have to be the same. Bam, just like that. Nice big old ugly, sticky, gross bit of thing. You can see it hanging off the canvas from the side, which is exactly, it's exactly what we want it to do. And that way we're gonna come in with our highlights very, very, very softly. And our highlights are gonna stick to whatever little chunks are reaching out from the canvas going, give me some paint. That's what they're gonna do. Okay, we're gonna mix up more some little uh, black into that same kind of dark mixture, just to keep it nice and dark. Let me put some blue in there too. Nice and dark. Bam. I'm gonna go back to that same gross brush, get it nice and thick and gross and nasty again, just like a blade of an ax. It's got some bits that are kind of thicker, some that are kind of choppier, just like that. And we're gonna come back over here, same thing, corner of the brush. Just the top, right? You're like, ooh, okay, well, we can adjust that. We'll go back up here, push a little bit harder. Now we got a little bit thicker top to it. And then we'll come down again, just starting with the corner. And then we're bouncing. And then we'll jump down and then we'll bounce up again. Do different things. And this is just the shadow of our, of our tree. It's not what it's gonna look like. This isn't the finished product. It's just the shadow of what we're looking for. And that looks kinda cool though. Really neat. Now what I wanna do, just to make the tip top of the tree very sharp, I'm gonna kind of drag it up. Put it right in the center, drag it up, just get that little bit of paint on the blade. There we go. Just so it drags a little bit of color up there, makes it nice and sharp on the top. It's really nice. We could throw like another cliff off down here. How about that fog? It'd be really cool. I'll actually show you how to do it with a fan brush. All right, let's say we're gonna pull this guy, he's living on the edge. Pull our fan brush down like that. Come down at this angle, but not too much of an angle. I really want it to be dark down there though. Get it nice and dark, especially down here in the, in the bottom corner, we want it to be the darkest. Does that look like, oh man. Oh man, that looks good, look at that. See, 
all about perspective, guys. And as we drag it over here, this becomes a flatter piece. See, as we raise the level up, now it's a little flatter piece of rock that we can deal with. Really want it to be dark. We're going to cover over this side and pull a little bit of our lighter color out and drag it down how we want it to look. Maybe we'll have some snow fall over the edge or some kind of something. Make it a little bit darker down here for our shadows. Just by adding it in, going back and forth. Mixing it up, differences in color, right? Man, that looks cool. That looks really, really cool. There should be like a little step off right there. Well, there is now, now that I touched the canvas, Josh. Whoop, comes down like that. Really make it dark on the bottom of the canvas. I hate how you look down around that rounded edge when you're like hanging, like, oh, I missed that little bit right there. That looks lovely. It looks lovely. It's like popping right out at our, right out at us. Okay, now let's use some of these greens and yellows and we'll make some beautiful highlight color. Again, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the share button, and help me reach just one more fan just because you watched this today. Because that's what we like to do, right? I can't reach everybody, so you gotta help me. Okay, let's take a little bit of our phthalo green and our cad yellow. James Barlage told me about this color. Said that Steve Ross used it in some episode. And it makes a beautiful green. And I said, dude, you are right. Look at that. Beautiful green color right there. Now, let's see. That's the one I want right there. Everything's out of reach, right? I'm like, oh, I'm going to put the paint on my face. Okay, we're going to get a little bit of liquid white on our brush. Go right down into the lightest area of this green. We don't want it to be too thick. Otherwise it won't stick on all that thick paint, right? It's got all these little fingers that are reaching out, going, give me some highlight, okay? That's what we're trying to do, guy. That's what we're trying to do. Just relax, a little bit of highlight coming at you. Okay, the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna have very thin paint and we're gonna touch it so, so softly. If I push it with the same amount of pressure that I've made to get the paint to stick on there, it's going to mix together and create mud. That's not what we want to happen, okay? Before we do that, let's get a little bit of, uh, you guys got me all off track. A little bit of brown, a little bit of white. I'm gonna come down here and make some tree bark. All right, we have all these exposed areas of our tree. I figure it should have some bark to it. So we're gonna scrape up a little bit of bark, put it on the highlight side, right? Just where they can, just where we can see a little bit of it in its kind of exposed areas. And then we'll come back in with that dark and on the opposite side, throw a little bit of dark highlight or dark shadow to create the look that we're going for, All right? Some of the times the, the paint that's there isn't enough, doesn't make it as thick, this, that, and the other. So we need a little bit of that thick textured dark side of our, of our paint as well. Just like that. Doesn't have to be dead center, but makes it look kind of cool. A little bit more of that up here. If we could just get the, oh, just like that, the smallest little bit. That way when someone's looking real close, they're going to see that bit of brown in there. All right, we're going to come back to our highlight brush. And we're very, very lightly at the same angle of our hand and the same corner, but so soft, okay? Just so soft. Not every piece has to be high lit. It doesn't have to, you know, catch the sun. Not every piece is going to. So we're just going to come down and touch very lightly. And whatever wants to stick is going to stick. All right? Remember, we've got a, a sunny side to our tree, so this side's not going to be so bright. Right? One little, little, little stick come out right there. And we're just pushing, and you can see the dark start to climb up our brush. Okay? I don't know if you can. The harder that I push, the more that dark color is starting to climb up the brush versus the clean side, right? So we're gonna go back, we're gonna flip it to the clean side, we're gonna come over here. And again, down around the bottom, we don't need it to be as bright. It really doesn't have to be bright at all. You gotta leave it that same kind of dark shadowy color because nothing's really happening down there. Now, why don't we mix up a little bit different green? We'll use the sap green, and we'll use the cad yellow and the yellow ochre just to show you a little different color green that I can make. <clears throat> this is more of like an army green, like a Jeep. I imagine a Jeep would be painted this green. 
Okay, you're gonna go back, get a little bit more liquid white, down into the thin part, right? Not straight up into the thick pile right away. Down into the thin area. And then we're gonna come in here, same amount of very light pressure. And whatever's gonna stick is gonna stick. The more we go down, the more we're gonna have to press in order to get that color to stick on there. So then we have to rotate the brush around. Now remember, it's gonna be very, gonna have very sharp bristles the first time you rotate around because it's a brand new fresh side of the, of the, the brush, right? We haven't had any, any little bits go on there yet. So you gotta be careful. Again, when you, every, every time you come to reload, you have to be careful when you come back because the brush isn't gonna act just like it was acting right here as you were running out. It's gonna be a little bit different. So you gotta let it be different. There we go. Look at that. That is a beautiful looking tree, guys. I have my branch stick in front of the, the trunk though. That would help. A little bit of difference. A little bit of color, a little bit of here, a little bit of there. All right, I'm gonna go back and put that little bit of green in. It's lovely, fantastic. Now, the more and more you push, the more you're gonna make mud, the more it's gonna mix, it's gonna change color, it's gonna do all sorts of things. So, decide on your color and don't force it in there. That's the worst thing you can do. You don't wanna force it. All right, now we just need to highlight this little bit of rock. Oh, maybe there's like a path right here, just based on how we had it, you know, kind of coming out. Maybe there was a little bit of a, a little bit of a walkway in there. Just by shaking the brush side to side, kind of cutting, pushing some of that thicker paint away, and now we have a little walkway in here. That's kind of cool, if you ask me. All right, let's take our knife, because we want this real front section, right? We went from really thick to really thin, and then bow, we're gonna go really thick again. Now we're gonna take some of that brown color right here, we're gonna mix it with some of the yellow ochre, because the yellow ochre and the brown, oh, do they go good together, let me tell you. All right, we're gonna not over mix it, leaving it just like that, so if I scrape in between the dark area, the light area, I get all these little different colors on the brush here, on the knife anyway. Now pull it down, pull it down, pull it down, leaving that dark color back there. Right? We don't want it all to disappear. We gotta have the dark color there, or it cannot, cannot be all this same color brown. Okay, now we're gonna mix in with that kind of shadowy color. And just as, just kind of go over it and let it change, let it get, uh, you know, progressively darker as it comes this way. And if we have that kind of dark color on there to begin with, it's gonna change color and become something else, which is really neat. Really neat, right? Very dark, very thick down here in the corner, just so it covers it all in, besides our path, obviously. A little path for Frodo and Sam. <laughs> Maybe they come up to the top right here. Who knows? Who knows what they do? Let's scrape in a little bit of path, though. All right, come in with our knife and that kind of brown color. We're gonna scrape it. It's gonna mix with whatever's down there. Just kind of back and forth with our with our knife. And it kind of cuts it in, leaves places, kind of thicker, kind of lighter. See if we can't cover the edge. Turn our knife all over the place, right? Yeah, just like that. And I want to have a dark line underneath though. If you lose that dark line, then we lose our path. Because it doesn't look like a path, it just looks like it falls off the edge of the, the thingy. So don't lose your path. Just like that. I almost liked it darker. Let me add a little bit of shadowing in there, see what that looks like. I'm just gonna add it, we're gonna mix it back and forth and mix it and mix it and mix it. It's gonna be dark, but we want it to be dark. We just don't want it to be so dark that uh, you can't tell the difference anymore. Matte is nice. A little bit of texture in there. Maybe every so often you get a little hump where you can see a little bit of dirt, some kind of something where the light is hitting it. Just bury the last little bits of light before the sun goes down. Way off there, a little piece, a little, little smack, a little piece of something. Never know, you can't tell me it isn't out there, right? Okay, let's wash off one of our one inch brushes. Now I'm gonna come back 
And instead of snow, I think since these are so green, I think we should do some grass. So we're gonna come in with our, our liquid white into our little green colors, maybe mix them together, just a couple. So they're a little different, right? Come in, just tap them into our, our little shadowy area. Kind of at the same angle, like we're leading ourselves down. And the more and more we tap, the more it's gonna kind of blend in together. And then you can see we left this area a little bit brighter over here. Come back with the smallest amount of dark. Just a little bit. You don't want it, you still want to be able to see the green, but you want to be able to tell they're noticeably darker right there. Maybe a little bit of light catches it around the side. But you gotta have it be a little bit darker. And then right here in the front, maybe a little bit brighter. Just like that. Very kind of sort of neat, guys. It's sort of neat. You gotta have some of that dark in there though. Just like that, very cool. Very cool. We can even put like a even like a little fence post on the side up here. Just like this, pulling it to the side. Maybe this guy gets a little bit taller. Right. And this guy gets a little bit taller. And a little bit bigger as they come around, come around the bend. And maybe this guy's way off the edge over there. Come back to that same brown on the right hand side. Don't want to cover it all. all right, bring it around the edge a little bit. And these ones over on the side, remember they can be darker because they're in the shadow. They don't have to be so stinking bright. It can be a little bit darker. So if it mixes together, it's not a whole big deal. Look at that, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool how that worked out. Those are neat. Little bits of little bits of something happening out there so you don't fall off the edge, right? There we go. All right. I think we're gonna call this one done, guys. It is getting hot up here. You can tell the uh, summer is coming here in Vegas. It's getting warm and it's annoying, let me tell you. All right, let's put our little guys in. Now, if you don't know, as part of my signature, if this is the first time you might be watching a Paint with Josh video, thank you for watching, by the way. But if you don't know, I add my family in each painting that we do as part of my signature in the form of these three little birds. So that way you can tell which one is mine, right? If you see it. So we're gonna drop our big guy in there. That's me. That's my wife. That's my daughter, Bailey. And that little guy we'll talk about on, on Sunday. Okay, it's a sort of a touchy subject, so we won't really go into it too much, but I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. And uh, you know, I really was, a, I hope I was able to teach you something different that you didn't know, an easier way to do something, how to make something look further away, how to do two mountains, how to make your trees look really close and really pop up with the, with the highlights. Just really hope I was able to do something for you. So, you know, I really hope you try this video. I hope you share it. Uh, when you do try yours, when you post it in the group, share it around, share it all over the place. Send it to your grandma, do anything you can just to get me one more fan. That's your job. I'm tasking you with a job is to get one more fan for me before the next time we have another video, right? So if you can share this, I'd really appreciate it. Give it a like and uh, send it around. And I'd really like to see your versions. I really hope you guys give it a try. So until then, until we see you again, uh, you know, take care and have the rest of a good night. And, you know, we're still in the Olympics, so go Team USA. Bye-bye.